Ugly Bird YouTube channel. I'm starting off this video a little bit different because I found a video in my archives that I never released and I cannot believe I did not release it. I filmed this video a couple years ago with one of my best friends, Ann Burke from Antarja. You know her as the Intarja expert. And if you don't know much about Intarja, it requires a lot of color work and knowing how much yarn you need for each of those color sections is very important. The great thing is that you can use the knowledge to calculate those little sections of color or an entire project of color. So sit back, relax, enjoy the little bit of math that is involved as Anne talks us through how to calculate how much yarn we need for the project. All right, I hope you enjoy. Bye. Hello, welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, Prouts Books for Sifra Red Heart Yarns, and I'm joined today by Gage Guru. <laughs> Ann Burke of Antarja Knits. And one of the biggest questions, the number one question I often get from knitters and crocheters is, how much yarn do I need for a project? And I usually tell people, get as much as you think you need and add one more, which is not a very scientific method, right? I mean, it just gets you a whole bunch of yarn in your stash. Yeah. So what I am going to do is have Ann teach us how to do the most magical thing ever. And you guys out there are always going to know exactly how much yarn you need for your projects. So Ann, take it away. Okay. Well, my specialty is in Tarja where we have a lot of different colors that are worked in a single layer fabric, so mm -hmm. they're next to each other. So what that means is you have a lot of different yarn supplies on your needle. A lot of different butterflies. A lot of different butterflies. And it is going to be a lot more efficient if you only have as much yarn in your butterfly as you actually need for that particular section. Yes. And I just thought, wow, that would be really great. And so what I needed was a different kind of gauge. Our normal gauge is how many uh, stitches there are per inch, right? Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. we know how wide it is and how long it is. So what I needed to know is how many inches there were per stitch. Because if I knew that, and I knew the number of stitches in my motif, that I could calculate mathematically how much yardage was needed. And this is going to be uh, suitable for a lot of things, not just in Tarsha, but also what if you were knitting a cardigan and your husband said he wanted a pocket? and that the pattern didn't have a pocket, and you wanted to know if you had enough yarn to add that pocket, or if you're gonna change a collar, or you could even calculate the sleeve. The numbers get really big, uh, but we take those inches and we divide them by 36 to get the number of yards, and that's not quite so scary. Okay. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, so in order to do that, we're going to do a specialized swatch that's very, very simple and very fast. Uh, we're going to make a swatch of 100 stitches. Okay. So that I will know how much yardage I need to do 100 stitches because that makes the math really easy. So I'm going to cast on 20 stitches. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now this is not going to be used. This is just waste yarn because I do not want to use that in my calculation. Cast on stitches are not going to be the same yardage as your regular stitches that you're making in your project. So I'm going to put another color on <laughs> and I'm going to just attach it with a little, uh, just a little half hitch knot. I do that all the time. Yep, just like that, that I can slide up really tightly. Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to calculate this either, but the knot is going to tell us where the yarn starts. Okay. Okay. I am just going to knit five rows of stockinette. It's not complicated. Anybody can do this. And you don't even have to watch me do it if you don't want to. Okay, here's my little swatch. And this is one of those cases where you don't have to do a four inch swatch. That's pretty nice, huh? So I've got five rows, and the way that you count the rows is we don't count our waist yarn at all. We start right above that. You can see how easy it is to see the stitches when you use a different color score. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three, four, and the fifth row is on the needle, and it does count. So we only want the yarn that's in the actual stitches. So I'm going to cut that off at the very base of that stitch. Then I'm going to take the needle out and unravel it. We haven't blocked it, so it doesn't make the yarn all curly. It's very easy to see. And we have our little knot here to show us where we're going to start measuring. Oh, that's brilliant. Now, this is a very long piece of yarn. 
and it's too long. Uh, for our video. Yeah, and it, it really is sort of hard to measure something that long anyway. So normally I, um, ooh, that's actually going to work, Marley. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, great. So I normally do it in quarters, and I was worried it was going to go off the screen, uh, but it won't. Now the one thing I'm going to caution you with is you don't want to overstretch this, because if you do, um, you're going to short yourself. And the first few times I did this, I thought my numbers were right, but it, it wasn't working. I was, I was coming up short, and then I realized I had been stretching my yarn to make it tight, and you don't want to do that. So let it be relaxed. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to tell you, with the, this is Marley Bird's Chic Sheep Yarn, which is 100% merino, and man, is it great. <laughs> I mean, this is wonderful yarn. It is very, very springy and very flexible. So you've got to be cautious with that, too, especially when you're knitting, because when, if you're pulling that yarn around that needle, then your fabric will... Yep. So you want to you know, keep a really loose hand, ha ha ha, so to speak. <laughs> Okay, so here we go, and I've got it. It's nice and uh, um, nice and relaxed. And then you're going to measure from one end to the other. All right, so my 100 stitches uh, divided into quarters is 14 and a half inches. Now, 14 and a half times four is 59. 58. 58. Okay, 58. So that means that for 100 stitches, I need 58 inches of yarn. Okay, so for, let's say my motif was 50 stitches, how much yardage would I need? How many inches? So it would be half this amount. Mm -hmm. So it would be half of 58, mm -hmm. which is 29? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so you'd need 29 inches. If it was 200, then I would need twice as much as 59. Okay. And I generally round up, so I would say 120 inches. Okay. Okay, so I always round up. And also, I count how many rows there are because those links need yarn too, okay. don't they? Yes. I found that the hard way when I was working with this and, and I was falling short again. So, so that's I when add, you're dealing with intarsia. That's right. Okay. When you're dealing with intarsia, you will add um, one stitch for every row. Okay. So instead of, um, if, if it was 50 stitches I, and eight rows, I would... Uh, count f uh, that is 58 okay. that I want. Okay, that makes sense. And then I would multiply that by my yarn gauge, okay. which is 0.58. Got it. Got yeah. it. Now, if somebody was doing this where they were just making a sleeve all of one color and yeah. it was like 100 stitches and 200 rows, that's what they would count that. Yes, that gets more complicated. Let's do a pocket instead because that's easier. Oh, okay, that's fine. So, with the pocket, let's say your pocket is 20 stitches wide and uh, 20 rows deep, well, 20 times 20 is going to be 400. Uh -huh. So you would take your yarn gauge, 0. 0.59 times 400. 0.58. And 0. 0.58 times 400, and that would be how many inches you need, which is a big number. So you divide it by 36 to see how many yards it would be. Okay. And so then you could, you could also divide that further, how many yards, and know how many yards are in an a, like an ounce or whatever and then you could measure yes like you could do all sorts of measurements from there that's right and you can do a sleeve what I do when I want to do a sleeve is I take the cast on number of stitches and the total number of rows and start there and then I'd go to one side and add up those little ones on the side multiply that by two and then I add that to my central number, and that way I don't have to count every single row, which is really a pain. Right, that yeah. makes sense. So I, I, I divide it into sections. And I did that in my book. I had to do this on every single motif. All of those motifs, their stitch counts had to be done. I love this. So I got really good at, at looking for the central square, the central rectangle, and then getting the little pieces around it and adding them up. So essentially, if you can grab your yarn you're going to use, grab the needles you're going to use, Knit 100 stitches. 100 stitches. Crochet 100 stitches. Yep. Or would it be 100 stitches? Yeah, 100 yes, stitches. Yes, 100. 100 stitches. 100 stitches makes the math easier. Okay. Because then it. you have a decimal, then you can multiply it. All right. And then you would take that out. you got to measure it because mm -hmm. we want to know how many inches per stitch, not stitches per inch. Yeah. And once you have that, you know, Bob's your uncle. You, yeah. You can do anything. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is brilliant. I think you just have, like, mind blown. And if you don't want to do that, just knit a random yarn butterfly and start going. <laughs> you know, and just add more when you run out. Fantastic. So it's not like you have to do it. 
It's just that I, I keep trying to find ways to make this more efficient for people so that you have more tools, whether you choose to use them or not. Um, we there's a lot of really interesting things that we could do if we just set our minds to it. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, now you know how to figure out if you have enough yarn to make that pocket yep. or how much yarn or you cuff. need to uh, wrap up in your butterfly, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Uh, pretty, pretty darn exciting. Hopefully this all makes sense to you. Um, I will also... If it's not, it is all in the book. Yeah, it's I'm all in the book. Very clearly done It'll with examples. Yeah. <laughs> so a link to the book, a link to antarja.com and my website is all available in the video description box below. Thank you, Anne, for joining us today and telling us about Yarn Gauge. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. I love Ann Burke so much, and I'm so grateful that she took the time out of her busy life to come to Colorado and film some wonderful videos with me in my old studio. You can check out all of those videos right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the video description box below. And while you're down there, you can also click on the link to purchase Ann's book. And Tarja, the book, is full of information just like this that you can use to better your Intarja skills, but then also to improve your knitting skills. It is chock full of information. This book is a staple in my library and I know it will be a staple in yours. Along with the book and the videos, I've also released a couple of patterns by Anne on the Marley Bird website, so you can check those out as well and maybe dabble into some of your new Argyle type skills and uh, make yourself something special. All right, that's it for me. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.